As Slatan calls time on his career, finally being able to call himself a Champions League winner, we head into season two with our star striker in Diketalara leading the line and the returning Lorenzo Colombo from his loan spell at least ready to take up the fight for that final striking spot. Elsewhere, it's no surprise to see that Real Madrid are not interested in selling last year's sensation Brahim Diaz, which means Daniel Maldini, son of former Milan legend Paolo Maldini, also returns from his loan last season, ready to try and force his way into our starting lineup this year as we look to add a further the sprinkling of youth to this Italian giant. With the sale of now 32-year-old Florenzi to Villarreal for 15.5 million, right back will be the first position we'll be looking to try and strengthen this season. And like last season, we're going to follow the tradition of trying to poach players from some of our other Italian rivals. And that means we'll be raiding Torino for Ivorian Wilfred Zingo. Since joining the club in 2019, his entire professional experience has been in Italian football. And judging by his physical and technical stats, I think he could be ready to take the step up to the next level of his career. 25.7 mil seems like a steal for a 79 rated 22 year old with bags of potential and he'll look to battle it out with Calabria for the remainder of this career mode for that coveted right back spot. With the incredible performances of Rafael Leal last season, Rebic was absolutely furious that he wasn't getting enough game time. So much so he tried everything he could to force a transfer away from the club and at the start of this season he has been successful with his plan. A bit of £29.1 million from Real Madrid is enough to turn his head and Rebic bids farewell to the Milan faithful. In terms of replacing him, as you'll see from my shortlist, I had two different options to replace him with and sticking to the theme of poaching talent from other Italian clubs, I was planning on going back in for Nicolas Gonzalez, the man who was desperate to join us last season, but Florentina blocked the move. My second option was a young and up-and-coming winger in Hamed Junior Traore from Sassuolo. However, after taking a quick look through my squad hub, I was reminded of my own up-and-coming young winger who's just come through our own youth academy. Now finally turning 18 and showing great potential, I think that young German Malta Schneider is ready to try and make the step up into my squad. With great pace and dribbling stats for someone of his age, he can play on either wing, offers lots of versatility, and won't complain or disrupt squad morale if he finds himself on the bench. So I've decided to park the idea of bringing in another player, and instead, I'm putting my faith in Malta Schneider to come good this season. And speaking of Rafael Leal, you'll see he only has one year left on his contract. Now, due to his high rating and incredible performances last season, there's absolutely no way I'm going to let his contract run down. So a quick round of negotiation with him and his agent later, Liao will sign a new three-year contract extension with a nice little salary bump to keep him at the club for at least the next four years. After last year's League, Champions League and Supercoppa Italia victories, we came ever so close to a clean sweep across the board, but we were only stopped at the last hurdle in the Coppa Italia by Napoli losing 3-1 in the final. And it looks like the board are expecting much of the same again this season. A lot of pressure to put on quite a few young Italian shoulders. And speaking of youngsters, you can see we have a plethora of talent coming through our youth academy this season, but the two youngsters I'm especially interested in are firstly striker Matisse Bouchard, 16 years of age and already 6 foot and 59 rated with 5 star skill moves and a high defensive work rate. If Lorenzo Colombo doesn't impress this season, Bouchard may well get the nod up to the senior squad next year. And secondly is Italian goalkeeper who ironically is also called Lorenzo Colombo. With a potential rating of 94, he's certainly one to watch out for the future. Mignon has the goalkeeping situation wrapped up at the moment, but with some Premier League clubs sniffing around for him in real life, there might come a time when I need to be realistic and consider selling him. If that turns out to be the case, and if Colombo can continue his positive development, we may well have a ready-made youth prospect ready to come in and take his place. And this was exactly what I was talking about. Porto coming in with an outrageous bid of 97.4 million for Mignon. If this was a Premier League team, I might consider accepting it because I imagine in real life it's what the goalkeeper would probably want. But at this stage in his career, I don't think a move to Porto is something that Mignon would really consider. So we're going to have to go ahead and reject this one for now. So having won the Champions League last season, it looks like Bayern Leverkusen were the lucky winners of the Europa League, which means one thing, that we'll be kicking off season two with a huge clash against the German team for the coveted European Super Cup. There will be starts for new signing Wilfred Zingo at right back, as well as a start for youngster Daniel Maldini in the camp position. And what a decision that appeared to be inside the opening 12 minutes as after some nice work and across from Coman on the right-hand side, Liao won it in the air and Maldini was on hand to apply a looping header over the goalkeeper for his first goal of this career mode. And and our first goal of the season to make it 1-0 early doors. And Maldini was added again 15 minutes later as he laid on a beautiful through ball for Di Ketelara. His strike from outside the area could only force a corner after a good save. 
Fast forward to the 40th minute and this time it was our new signing Wilfred Zingo who was involved, picking out an unmarked Kingsley Coman at the back post. His powerful header soared past the goalkeeper and gave us a two goal cushion and made it 2-0. However in the second half, Patrick Schick, the man who terrorised defences for me in my Manchester United career mode, came back to haunt me as he got Leverkusen back in the game thanks to an expertly applied strike past my goalkeeper to make it 2-1. And only 10 minutes later my goalkeeper had to come to the rescue again, this time it was a good save from Lozhek strike outside the box and Zadar got even closer a minute later as he had a wonderful opportunity to level the scores but he can only blaze his shot high and wide from inside the penalty area and after some wonderful work from substitute Malta Schneider and Teo Hernandez down the left hand side another substitute in Lorenzo Colombo could have made it and should have made it 3-1 but he could only fire straight at the goalkeeper from close range our one goal cushion was enough though to see out the final few minutes as we managed to win our first game of this new campaign meaning it was Tonali who got to lift our first trophy of the season and what a brilliant way to kick off season two. De Ketelara is the next one to be subject of a big money transfer offer and this time it's for Chelsea and it's a whopping £116.4 million offer. This is incredibly difficult to turn down because I know in real life De Ketelara would be desperate chomping at the bit to join Chelsea but having only just signed a new deal last season and being our top goal scorer as well I think we'll need to hold on for him for at least one more year. If he proves to be as successful this year as he was last year and another Premier League team come in for him then I definitely won't stand in his way. We're going to kick off our first league game of the season though against Udinese and with the board desperate for us to retain the title yet again this season we're hoping to start with a bang but it's Udinese who get off to a better start after some fancy footwork from De La Feo on the left hand side allows him to get a shot away. He can only go wide though and a few minutes later Vargas absolutely skins Calabria on the left hand side again, drives into the box but then absolutely blazes his strike high and wide from a really good position. On the 27th minute though we have lift off after some terrific work from Coman, dancing through the Udinese defence, shifting the ball onto his left and powering a strike past the goalkeeper to give us a 1-0 lead. Whether there was a foul on the goalie from Maldini in the build-up play is debatable, but we'll take the goal nonetheless. Tonali forced the goalkeeper into a good save not long after that, but it was Mignon to our rescue just before half-time after Beto bundled through my defence and struck from outside of the box. Fortunately for us, our goalkeeper was equal to it. Only a minute later though from a corner, Udinese was so unlucky as a thunderous header struck the crossbar as they were inches away from an equaliser. De Ketelara showed though that his head hasn't been fully turned after forcing the goalkeeper into another save early in the second half and Bernassia was also looking for goal a few moments later but once again the goalkeeper was on hand to put a stop to it. He could do nothing though in the 65th minute as after some fantastic work from Tonali again on the right hand side finding space for a cross which was met by the head of De Ketelara and he buried it into the bottom right hand corner leaving the goalkeeper with absolutely no chance and giving us a 2-0 lead and after building out from the back beautifully Tonali was so unlucky not to add a third but he could only drag his shot wide. Udinese managed to pull one back late on though Beto finally being able to get his goal after some brilliant work in the build up for it to put some pressure on us in the final few minutes. In the end though thanks to some cheeky tactics to run down the clock from Pobega we managed to secure an opening day win and held on to beat Udinese 2-1 and we followed that up with a pretty simple 3-1 win in our first home game of the season against Monza courtesy goals from De Ketelara again, Kalulu and Sela makers. And so with the transfer window finally shut we managed to sort out some departures for the likes of Mattia Caldara who leaves for Brighton in a deal worth 3 mil. Lizetic is back out on loan again this time to Girona FC and Marco Bresciani heads out the door permanently to Al Shabib. So as we fast forward halfway through the season our stature in Serie A is even better than this time last year. We remain top of the table but a whopping 7 points clear of second place Lazio. The least goals conceded, the most goals scored. My young team are really starting to reaffirm my decision not to spend big in the summer transfer window. Elsewhere in the Champions League after a second place finish in the group stage that perhaps we should have won, it's Bayern Munich we've been drawn against in the round of 16. With the board wanting us to at least get to the final again this year, we're going to need an inspired run of results just like we had last season, starting off against Real Madrid at the same stage in the competition if we want to fulfil that objective. It's no surprise to see Charles de Ketelar atop of our goal scoring charts midway through the season, already getting 17 goals in all competitions, 15 of those coming in 19 Serie A games. What a season he is having and proving that he's not letting the earlier distraction from Chelsea get into his head. And it's also no surprise to see our other star youth prospect Rafael Leal second in line with 11 goals, three assists to his name. I'm absolutely delighted that we tied him down to a long-term deal in the summer. Daniel Maldini hasn't featured as much as I would have liked him to, only 10 appearances and nine of those coming in Serie A. But with his rating already increased to 71, I'm expecting more 
more to come from him in the second half of the season. For now though, it's back to the football and it's our second opportunity of a trophy this season as we go head to head with sixth place Napoli for the coveted Supercoppa Italiana. Last season we beat Inter Milan in a tight 1-0 battle and the fans will be hoping we can do the same thing today. Five minutes in though and it's Napoli who are on the front foot straight away. A wonderful ball through from the winger to Osserman. Some fancy footwork and a cross that would have resulted in a goal if it wasn't for an incredible Kalulu interception. It took us 20 minutes to carve out our opportunity ourselves though. Liao and Maldini combining down the left hand side and the son of Paolo took on a shot from outside the area to force the goalkeeper into a good save. We almost took the lead from the resulting corner. Liao jumping highest to meet the cross from Maldini but again the goalkeeper was equal to it. A lovely chip from De Ketelara into the path of Coman just before half time allowed him to do the hard work driving down the right hand side and then applying a beautiful piece of play to cut back inside give the ball back to De Ketelara who could only smash it at the defender from close range. Napoli started off the second half with much more fire in their bellies though and after some wonderful build up play Mignon was forced into a great save on the 52nd minute and it was only a few minutes later they passed it really nicely round the edge of our area and we backed off and backed off and that allowed Danny Elmo to apply a powerful finish past our goalkeeper to give Napoli a 1-0 lead. From the restart Coman almost got us right back into the game after some lovely build up play down the left hand side. Maldini played it into his path but a wonderful save from the goalkeeper denied him and we had to settle for a corner and after some glorious interchanging passing between Pobega and Hernandez down the left hand side Hernandez laid it on a plate for Tequetanara who could only smash his strike against the post on the 77th minute and after Liao won the ball back inside the penalty area we managed to work it back into De Ketelara from even closer range but again he couldn't take advantage smashing his strike against the goalkeeper leaving every Milan fan in the stadium incredibly frustrated. Pobega had the chance to equalise right at the death but fired his strike straight at the goalkeeper as well and it meant that Napoli were able to grind out a 1-0 win and crown themselves the new Supercoppa Italiana champions and unfortunately for us it was a really disappointing way to lose our crown. In other news I said at the start of the season youth goalkeeper Lorenzo Colombo was one to look out for and due to us receiving and accepting an £8.8 .8 million offer for backup goalkeeper Vazquez it means we've got space to promote Colombo up to our senior squad to become the backup for Mignon. A big moment for his career but the 16 year old is showing great potential and may well feature sooner rather than later for us. And as we come to the end of the season though AC Milan are well and truly back. Back to back league titles for the first time in countless years fending off Juventus for the second season running as they finish in second place. In comparison to midway through the season our defensive performance may have dropped slightly but in attack we have the most amount of goals scored by a country mile and of course that is in part to our star striker De Ketelara getting even more goals this year than he did last year. 38 goals in all competitions, 34 in 38 Serie A games. That is an incredible strike rate, plus 11 assists in all competitions too. I think I may have my work cut out for me in the summer trying to fend off some interest from some Premier League teams. The second part of our attacking trio in Rafael Leal stepped up with 25 goals and 3 assists. And of course the final piece in our attacking jigsaw, Kingsley Coman, weighed in with 12 goals, 10 assists in another fine campaign for him. Frustratingly, Daniel Maldini didn't have the performance nor the improvement that I was expecting of him only up by four points to 72 and it seems like he didn't feature in the league at all in the second half of the season. New signing Wilfred Singo chipped in with 25 appearances. His opening day assist remained his only one of the campaign but he did manage to get a solitary goal at least. Malta Schneider, the man who I was hoping was going to develop rapidly and maybe get a look in this season was completely shut out by the incredible performances of Rafael Leal. Only the one league appearance and I'm assuming that was the substitute appearance I gave him at the start of the season Season. Up by three points, maybe a loan might be best for his development next season. And unfortunately, our dream of a competition clean sweep has been dashed as we were knocked out of the Coppa Italia by Florentina on penalties in the round of 16. And unfortunately, we couldn't replicate our incredible performance in the Champions League last season. And whilst we did manage to get past Bayern in the round of 16, we then got knocked out by Roma of all teams in the quarterfinals. And as you can see, those results leave my job hanging by a thread as we head into season three. With my job, my reputation and AC Milan's status in the game on the line and with some big teams sniffing around some of my star players, we are in for a career-defining season as we head into Season 3 next episode. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you again next time.